we're going to go on and continue in it. Why is it when I go to my Facebook page, it just sits there and spins and don't? And why is that, I wonder, too? So strange. I want to blame the devil for everything, but you you, you probably can't really all the time, you know. <laughs> Yo, devil. Hallelujah. I see the AM service. Looky here. PM service. I found it. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, everybody. Possibly who's watching live on social media. We want to welcome you. We pray our prayer for you this evening is that you hear the word and receive the word. Glory to God and grow thereby. Be set free in areas, hallelujah, that only the word can do. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this morning we actually started a teaching concerning uh, familiar spirits and witchcraft and, and, and stuff and all that's going on in the earth today. I still did not pull up the prophecy. I want you all to see from Kenneth Hagin dealing with uh, devils and demons and stuff and uh, what he said about uh would come about in these last days. I'll, I'll try to do that this week and pull some of those things up because we may cover a little bit more next week on this. But um, by no means am I saying in, in bringing this teaching out and stuff that we're out to fuss and fight and chase after a bunch of demons and devils. We're not. No. And, uh, but we are to know the devices of Satan and our, the enemy that's uh, arrayed against us there is no doubt in these last days that the enemy is uh, alive and well, and there's more demonic uh, influence in the world today than we ever dreamed of, and the church needs to just literally wake up to it and be ready to stand against the forces of darkness and know how to stand against the forces of darkness. And that's the only reason why we're bringing these things up I do not believe every little thing that goes down has uh, demons attached to it. You know, there was a teaching at one time, every little sickness had a certain demon attached to it. Y'all remember that? And they, they literally would throw it up and, and stuff up there when they was delivered from it and all that sort of stuff. He got crazy. And that's the reason why God backed off because man got involved in a lot of this stuff that had nothing to do with what was actually going on. But needless to say, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is there are demons and devils on this earth and they have a right to be here because of what Adam and Eve did. And their, their sole purpose is to influence man to the degree that, that they become obsessed and ultimately possessed so that they can carry out the will of Satan on the earth because Satan has to have a, uh, an agent in the earth. If he just came into the earth any old way, he'd be an illegal alien and illegal to, to operate here. He has to operate through man. God, has to do, God does the same thing. He operates through man. And uh, so Satan is looking, but Satan's ultimate goal is to possess people to the point where he can drag their souls to hell. Okay? Now the church throughout all of history has dabbled in to occultic practices and witchcraft and stuff, and that's the reason why we find it over there in the book of Deuteronomy. God had to deal with it. And he set the law down concerning it. And he called it abomination unto him for anybody who would get be involved with these sort of things. That's why I get jumped all over, uh, laughed at, mocked, and ridiculed every Halloween because during Halloween, 
the church embraces and just loves the witchcraft and everything else. Listen, it still is an abomination unto God Almighty. Okay? Now, now there will be a lot of people that will teach this sort of thing right here that I'm going to teach tonight and then draw the line and it's okay to do the, the Halloween stuff. No, it's not. It's the same, same stuff. It's witchcraft. It's sorcery. It's death, devils, and demons. And it's an abomination unto God. And the church needs to wake up from this garbage and, and do what we're supposed to do. So, let's take a look at it. Uh, I'm not going to go over the things that we went this morning and stuff. We looked at the 50s and 60s and all that, you know, how we got to where we're at. So, we're here, okay? Now, as the church, we need to listen to what God has to say about these things and, and go back to our old saying that we started saying in 2020. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I don't got no opinion. You don't got no opinion about it. It's what God says that goes, man. Amen. Right? Yeah. Okay. So here in Deuteronomy, you can turn there if you want, and James may pull it up. But here in Deuteronomy ch chapter 18, verses starting in verse 10, and I think this may be, out of, now this may just be King James again, but... Uh, Chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. Starting in verse 10. Let me make sure I, I'm reading it exactly the way. Okay. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or to useth deviation, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. There it is. I didn't say it. God said it. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Okay. Now, uh, and we'll go over this just, just a little bit. Those who practice witchcraft or deviation are a soothslayer. Okay? Uh, observer of times. Or one who interprets omens. That's an enchanter. That word enchanter that we read there. Or a sorcerer. That is a witch. Do y'all know those witches are alive today? They, they pride themselves in who they are. Okay? Uh, or one who conjures spells. That's a charmer. Okay? Or a medium. That's a consulter with familiar spirits. We know them today as psychics. You go out west and there are psychics everywhere. Okay, we went to Sedona, Arizona, and Mary Jo wanted to walk through the little strip mall area there and stuff, and we walked into just a normal gift-type shop, and they disguised themselves. Well, when I walked in, she's looking for particular things that she wants, likes to look at and stuff, but when I walked in, I just happened to turn, and this whole wall over here is all about witchcraft. They had the dolls, the pin dolls, all kinds of stuff. It was all under... The disguise. I've heard uh, Hilton Sutton even say he walked into a drugstore one time. And it was no more drug. They sold the drugs, yes. But it was a store for the occult. Everything in there. And he said, man, it just got all over him. They disguise it, even. 
But we walked into that place. I walked back outside. Mary Jo pulled around in there a little bit and everything. But I didn't care about being around that place. Every, everywhere we went. We went through, what was the, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. What's the name of that pretty little town thing where we tried to stay and we ended up driving back down there again? Deadwood? Yeah, Deadwood. Well, it was that town where we got out and we spent the night. We ended up staying in the hotel down there. It was kind of pricey. But up there on the corner, it had a uh, psychic palm reader, and she sat in this little booth. And, you know, you, you go to tourist areas, and they're everywhere like that. And I remember watching some lady had gone in there and she got out and come out and she she was right on, oh, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> and it's everywhere, it, you know. But that's a person, that's a medium and stuff, a consultant with familiar spirits or a spiritist, which is a wizard, or one who calls up the dead is a necromancer. You know, like I said this morning, Opal Renfrey used to love to have that guy on there. He was a necromancer. He talked to the dead. He called him up from the dead all the time. All the stars run to him. Oh, and he, he just wooed all them ladies on that thing, man. Just ooed and ah, that's all you ever heard the whole time. But it says, you shall be blameless. Anybody dabbling into this stuff, you shall be blameless before the Lord your God for dabbling into it. Amen. So these instructions of God of God are simple. He states that you should not they should not be found among his people or any of those who fall in the categories that we just mentioned. And he does not miss a single evil classification. He covers all the the classifications of evil that's in the earth today. You got to remember now Adam and Eve chose to know both good and evil. That is the reason why the evil is in the earth. Adam and Eve allowed it and chose it. And it's here. It's real. It is real. So abomination number one is to burn with fire or human sacrifice. Okay? Um, let me just... Uh, I want to read some of these things to you, but here in Leviticus chapter 18, verses 21, 20, and uh, verses 21, and then chapter 20, verses 2 and 4, and I'm going to put them together here like he has in, in this book here. It says, You shall not give any of your children to pass through the fire and sacrifice them to Moloch, the fire god. Now, evidently, there was human sacrifice during this time where these people were sacrificing their children to the fire god. They'd make them walk into, their, into the flames and burn them up and kill them, sacrifice them. Today, we do it in a different form even, but uh, abortion is a, 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 a sense of this same thing. It's, it's human sacrifice. We're sacrificing it to, 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 the, to things and stuff. But uh, And then it goes on to say, Any one of the Israelites or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel who gives any of his children to Moloch, the fire god worshiped with human sacrifices, shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Okay? Now this was, these are the laws that uh, King Saul actually set up and stuff through God to how to deal with people that that did these things. Can you imagine if the church went out and started? <laughs> Never mind. I... That's just a thought. Okay, we won't. We won't go there. And if the people of the land do at all hide their eyes from the man when he gives one of his children as a burnt offering, now here's another one who just turns his back and allows it to happen. To Molech, the fire god, and they overlook or neglect to take legal action to punish him, winking at his sin, and do not kill him as my law requires, then I will set my face against the man and against his family, 
and will cut him off from among their people, him and all who follow him, to unfaithfulness to me, and thus play the harlot after Moab. God's serious about this stuff, folks. Now, I don't know about y'all, but my Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, but Brother Joe, don't you know we're in the dispensation of grace today. He's not holding any of this against us now. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He hated it then, He still hates it today. Yes, we are in grace. Thank God for grace. Thank God I don't have to receive what I deserve, and that is hell. Thank God, thank God, thank God. But I still serve the same God of yesterday, today. I still serve Him. Notice God refers those ensnared by idol worship as harlots, He said there. Yet the Scriptures depict this horrible practice occurring more frequently among the children of Israel than one today might even think or believe. Yeah, the children of the Israelites dabbled into this stuff. The whole world has. And I'm telling you, it is big time today. It is it's big business and everything. <clears throat> I'm not going to say something, but I was going to say, it's on TV like crazy. And you know, y'all want to know one of the number one names that has brought a lot of it about? Disney. Disney's full of sorcery. Always has been, and we've trained our children well with it. Sorceries and witchcraft and all kinds of stuff. Disney has dabbled into it like you wouldn't believe. So, anyway, King Solomon erected a high place for Moab for the sake of his foreign wives. Y'all know King Solomon had six, 700 wives and 300 concubines. So in his uh, inability to truly please these women, he erected things for them because evidently they were some of them were involved. With it. You can look it up, 1 Kings 11, 6 through 8. Some of his foreign wives that he had. Woohoo! <laughs> so, uh, although we primarily know today of his wisdom, and he was a very wise man, no doubt, somewhere along the line, Solomon failed greatly in this regard. And he dabbled into some things he shouldn't have had. So the blatant act of disobedience to build such an altar, most likely under the skies of keeping the peace in his household, set the stage for other kings of Israel to make sacrifices to idols. Okay? Now we all know stories of the kings of Israel. Many of them were ungodly men, got in, into all kinds of things, and took Israel down the wrong path all the time. It's just kind of, it kind of reminds me of America today. We allow the ungodly ones to, to rule and reign for so long and they take us down these paths and then when you get a, a right, half-righteous guy in there and he's trying to correct some stuff, the whole world goes into an uproar. It is amazing. But here in 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 3, this is the Amplified. The Scripture states that Judean king Ahaz, I'm, that's how I'm going to pronounce it, also walked an evil path. But he, Ahaz, walked in the ways of Israel's kings, yes, and made his own pass through the fire, his own pass through the fire, and offered him as a sacrifice in accord with the abomination and adulterous practices of the heathen nations whom the Lord drove out before, excuse me, the Israelites. So, uh, likewise, while an Assyrian captivity, the Israelites forsook their commandments of the Lord and reduced themselves to make idle sacrifices, including causing their children to pass through the fire, as did King Manasseh, whose actions were discussed uh, 
here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 32, verses 32 and 36. Jeremiah. Now listen to this. Now this is what provokes God to anger right here. You don't, we don't want to be provoking God to anger, but watch this. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which, have, uh, which they have done to provoke me to anger, and they have turned their backs to me, not their faces, though I taught them uh, persistently, yet they would not listen and receive instruction. You, how many of you know we need to always remain teachable? <laughs> we don't always get it right all the time. But they set their abominations of idol worship in the house which is called by my name to defile it. Now Manasseh, that's what he did. He set up altars in the house of God in the temple for Baal worship. You're talking about an ungodly king. And they built high places for worship of Baal to cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire in worship also and to Melech, which I did not command them, nor did it come to my mind or heart that they should do this abomination and to cause Judah to sin. And now therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this which you say, it shall be delivered unto the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, and by famine and by pestilence. And the curse comes on you. And it goes on from there. Some think that human sacrifice, listen to this, is a thing of the past. I can't tell you how many people I, I'd get to talking to at work. You know, we just get in a general conversation. And why it always turns spiritual on spiritual things and stuff. And, you know, I, but it always did. Every time they get around me, it always did and stuff. And they talked about, you know, we don't see those sort of things. And I, I'd say something along the lines of, well, don't believe it's not real because it, it happens. Oh, and I, I, I have a tape at the house by John Hagee. And I literally took it to a, a, a number of these guys, and they quickly just brought it back to me. I said, if you don't believe it's real, watch this. It's, it's documented by uh, police and authorities in, in the cities and uh, FBI and everything. And they show in that film human sacrifice. This guy's laid down on the thing. The guy kills him. And then everybody surrounds him. And they cut a piece of him out and they eat his flesh. In his life, this group thought that they were doing something powerful. And they filmed it like a bunch of freaking idiots. They're all in prison today. Okay? FBI found that tape and busted every single one of them. Don't tell me it's not real. It's real. And there's sacrifices of children that still go on in India and pagan countries even today. They sacrifice them to, to the gods. I, I know of one instance they, there was, they, they, they look at uh, children. I remember reading stories about this from missionaries or something. They, there were certain children that would have a speech impairment and they wasn't exactly right well in certain sects of those religious groups in India they say that child's cursed and the witch doctor will come in or whatever they call him and he would deem no this is no good and he'd take that child out there and throw him out there in the woods and then they, he would put a curse on the family if they would go out there and help him until he died because he didn't meet the standards to be a, to live. wasn't perfect, you know. It kind of goes back to the animal sacrifice of Israel. They, you know, it had to be a, a spotless lamb. It had to be a spotless calf, and you know, no blemish. And they inspected them things regularly. They wouldn't dare sacrifice something to you know to God that had a blemish on it. And uh, 
but th th those sort of things go on today, guys, big time. Several years ago, I don't know if y'all remember this. I remember this. They uncovered a, a large number of human beings discovered near Houston, Texas. And they revealed several adults had been sacrificed during witchcraft activity, which drugs were used. And we learned what God had said about the witchcraft in, in, in drugs and stuff this morning a little bit. But I remember when that made news. It was, a, it was a mass grave of people. And they did forensic studies and found out these people were sacrificed. Sacrificed. And then they dabbled more and found out more and got more information. I never heard the whole story anymore, but I remember it being reported. That was a number of years back. But these same authorities tell us that many missing children today, they, they become human sacrifices for groups who uh, either worship Satan or other, some other form of false god or something. Satan worship, all through, although is nothing new, uh, it has spread all throughout America. And I'll tell you this, sex trafficking today is big time. You want to know why? Especially the little children. You want to know why? You, are, are your ears open enough to hear it? Or can you think you can stand it? These groups take those children and molest them in e every form and fashion possible. Please themselves sexually with these children. And then they kill them. And we never see them ever, ever again. Nobody ever finds them, ever, ever, ever again. Not only that, some of them are captured for nothing more than human sacrifice so that they can sacrifice them in their seances or their meetings and stuff. This is proven by the authorities here in the United States, law officials. It's proven. And the, the sad thing is, uh, you never hear about it that way. The, oh, we wouldn't dare tell everybody this sort of truth. You know, it, it's too upsetting for everybody to know. And that's the reason why these people that have lost children, they get no help. Help us. Help us, they say. And years go by, no help. You can go do an interview with them. No help from law enforcement or anything. It's real. Abomination number two, that was just abomination number one. Abomination number two is practicing witchcraft. The second category here in Deuteronomy, verse 18, one who practices witchcraft or deviation. The word witchcraft in this instance is deviation. And deviation is the practice of dis discerning future events or unknown things by supernatural powers. Okay, Instead of going to God the way God wants us to and asking of Him concerning events, man turns to the forces of evil and inquires of them about supernatural events and the events that are foretold to come upon the earth. This is an abomination unto God. Now this covers a lot, okay? Can y'all hold on? The word deviation in the Greek language is associated with the word python. Python. Okay? Y'all know what a python is, don't you? It's a large snake that squeezes or restricts the person and crushes them to death. So the spirit of deviation, or what the Bible also terms a familiar spirits, must work through a person who has become possessed or swallowed up by this thing. This evil spirit then works through that possessed person. Yes, can you believe that when you step into that psychic, if they're a true psychic, 
You are looking at a demon-possessed person as nice and as sweet as they are, and they're all on TV. I know there's one on TV. She got pretty little hair all fixed up, and she's just nice as she can be. And, oh, she's just so sweet. She is a demon-possessed woman. Demon-possessed. Think about that for a minute. In Acts chapter 16, verse 16, it tells of a young woman who was used by the spirit of deviation or familiar spirit. Y'all know the story, right? And she followed them all around, you know, and uh, hollering about Paul and Paul. They, they finally just said they've had enough. I don't think it was Paul. I forget who it was now, but... Um, they, they finally had enough and decided to cast that devil out of her. And uh, they did. And then the whole town got into an uproar about it because they made money on her. That was their means of, of making money. So through the possession of this demonic spirit, she obtains the satanic ability to seduce her victim until she has... The spirit possessing her takes control of their minds. The goal is for the victim to be slowly drawn into the evil web until they, uh, they are in deadly bondage. The process is the same of that as of a python. Just a little bit at a time. Squeeze them. She had this whole city in her squeeze. This demon did through her. It's amazing. We'll talk about that later on some more. Uh, the, this proves an excellent moment to remind you that Satan and demons can accomplish nothing unless it is through a human agent. Satan has to have the human element agent involved to operate in this world, in this earth, to get his will done. Of themselves they are stripped and utterly defeated by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can find that in Luke 11 and Colossians chapter 2. He made a show of them openly. He, he, he triumphed over them. We know that. Abomination number three. Here we go. Mm. A soothsayer sayer, or observer of times strongly implies an astrologer. So the prophet Isaiah says this. This is Isaiah 47, 12 through 14. Isaiah 47, 12 through 14. Stand now with the enchantments and the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. Perhaps you will prevail. You were wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly procrastinators or forecasters stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not... They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to set before. Isaiah states that the astrologers were, will be as stubble and burned. These are not people from whom uh, you should ever seek counsel from. Huh? Right. None of it. Uh, and like I said, we'll, we'll, as we go through this, we'll explain some more things later on and stuff. I'm just going to nail these here first. Abomination number four. Casting spells. Did y'all know it came out? I told y'all this this morning. The, na the national news reported it. I read it on social media and everything else from national news broadcast. CNN reported it and some others that when the uh, before November 3rd the church of Satan 
had cast spells upon all Christians that would vote for Trump. Cast the spell on them. What all? It didn't go into detail the, the spells that they supposedly was to cast upon us. But it, it was newsworthy for the news media to report it. Okay? Like there's something to report for. for. <sighs> So, one who interprets omens or an enchanter is a medium who possesses the evil ability to cast a spell over another person. It's real. It's out there. The black magic and voodoo of Africa, Latin America, and parts of the southern United States. I wonder where that southern United States is that that occurs in. I bet it's Louisiana. Every movie I've ever seen come out about down there in New Orleans. Them folks dabble into that voodoo and everything else like you ever never seen in your life. Oh yes, it's real. It involves rites, fetishes, and various charms. Also falling into this category is what Isaiah describes as one who conjures spells or a charmer. A charmer is one who uses words and or tricklets to bring either good or bad luck to a person. Good or bad luck. Ain't that something? Sticking pins into a voodoo doll is an example of this practice as is consulting a website or a 1-800 number that instructs how to cast a love spell on another person so that you can have them cast a love spell. People are, are drawn into this stuff, guys. And they may do it for entertainment and just laugh. <laughs> I think that it's okay. Let me give you a hint. Don't do it. You're opening yourselves to the devils. You're opening the door to the devil to coming into your life. Why? Because it's an abomination under God to dabble into this stuff. <laughs> abomination number five. Witches and wizards. A sorcerer or a witch are in the same category as a spiritist or wizard, which also includes warlocks, Wiccans, and white witches. Y'all know what Wicca is, don't you? It's a, real, it's a satanic religion. We had Mary Jo in her shop had uh, a guy who worked for the guy that owned the, the building. Uh, he was the maintenance guy over. He was a Wiccan. He come in there and I was trying to talk. And he's just as nice as can be. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they talk about how good they are and this, that, and the other. And that their gift is like, kind of like a, from God. You know, it's just the wrong God. You know? And, uh, it, and, and they can, you know, and I, I just laid it out for them. This is the way it is. You know, I told her, you're in a Christian shop here. I don't know if you know it. Appreciate what you're doing and stuff. But, uh, and he is nice. I didn't jump all over him everything, but I told him the gospel. Told him the truth about it. Yeah. So anyway, heaven sent. Wiccans and white witchcraft, witches are among those most deceived. They believe to be working for good and simply developing their own natural innate powers. And that's exactly what that guy explained to me, that Wiccan that I talked to. However, there's no such thing as white magic or magic that, or magic that supposedly makes good things happen for people. No such thing. Like witches, wizards, and warlocks, they deceive individuals into pledging uh, their head, head first into the occult and are candidates for demon possession. Why? Because you're opening the door to the devil in your life. 
All of these that we're talking about here are still in operation today and can be found in various forms all over the earth, all around the world. Amen? Abomination number six. Communicating with familiar spirits. A medium or a counselor for, with familiar spirits describes one who conjures demonic spirits who leads themselves to be lends themselves to be used by familiar spirits. One might better recognize this person today as a psychic. A medium or psychic attempts to tell the future by occultic means. Right? Crystal ball gazing, palm reading, tarot card reading, and the like are all included here. You can throw them all in the same basket. The term necromancer is one who calls up the dead, <clears throat> falls into this category also. The Hebrew language, language associates the word necromancer with familiar spirits. A medium attempts to use a familiar spirit to, to communicate with the dead as though as through a seance or something. How many movies have you seen? You, you remember seeing, there's all, I always had to have a seance scene involved in that. It's just buttering us up. It's all it's doing. It's dev the devil's way to butter us up. <clears throat> but through a seance, such as an act attempted by a witch, the witch of Endor, at the request of King Saul in 1 Samuel uh, 28. We read that this morning. Saul went to the witch of Endor, who operated. She was a necromancer, and, she was, and he wanted her to call up uh, Solomon. No, Samuel from the dead. And when that familiar spirit came up, she had never had that happen. It blew her mind. She flipped out. And then she realized that the guy standing before her and asked her to do that was King Saul. And she figured, I'm a dead woman. Because his law was to kill everyone. But he calmed her down and everything. But soon after, Saul called upon, because he knew, why would he call upon that? He knew God had departed from him. Now, let me tell you something concerning this. You and I, God does not, we live in the dispensation of grace. God does not depart from us or from people in general. He has an open door. Anybody can come in to the covenants of God by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you can have eternal life. It's the person who rejects God. Okay? Not the other way around. So if you take somebody who don't want to have anything to do with God, puts them in a very dangerous place, don't it? Because even Saul knew that God had departed from him. He says, I can go to the prophets. They can't tell me nothing. I can ask God. He don't speak to me no more. Everything he turned to, there was no answer. So he goes to this witch for the, to get answers. Knowing it's an abomination unto God, and it wasn't long after that, he dies. It kills him. His actions kill him. Yeah, that's just the truth. So, the term necromancer is one who calls the dead falls into this category. The Hebrew language associate the word necromancer with familiar spirits. A medium attempts to use the familiar spirit to communicate with the dead as though as through a seance. Such, an act, such is the act and attempted by the witch of Endor at the request of King Saul. Consorting also with a a Ouija board. Y'all ever heard the stories about Ouija boards? We laugh about it, don't we? But you know you're dabbling into the occult and dealing with that, that garbage? 
You're opening door to the devil in your life. A lot of people don't want to hear this today. You're fishing to see more and more of it. I'll tell you this. Uh, you know what we talked about this morning. In general, the body of Christ uh, through the 50s and 60s, even those that were not believers had enough reverence to know, you know, there was a higher power and there's a God and they pretty much let... Today it's totally different. They just as soon attack us, spit on us and everything else and hate us. Hate, hate God, hate His Word, hate His church and want to kill us. And the, the fact of the matter is, is that um, these today and, and all... Uh, demonic activity is so prevalent out there and in in, in, in using people in the hatred and, and everything that's going on and stuff. And uh, I don't know how to say it. You take something like the, the, the Ouija board and, and stuff like that and you continue dabbling into those things um, and you're dealing with these spirit forces that they don't know what it is that they're dealing with at all, you know. And I guess it's just plain old day entertaining. You know, I can remember when I was a kid and we'd have somebody, you know, you used to have those little uh, spend the night parties where there would be a couple of you around. It, it never seemed to amaze me. Every time you did, somebody wanted to have a seance. You remember those days? Listen, that's the devil. And I can tell you, you know, we all heard the stories of this happening and that happening. And, and listen, that's real. It's real. We may want to shrug it off as though it wasn't. Some of it is real. Amen. And it's, you know, these activities are forbidden by God. They are an abomination to God. And it amazes me that people don't want to hear this today even. But we've got to hear it. Why? Because we, the church, are light. And there's a dark, dark world out there. We are the only ones that are going to be able to stand against that darkness and push it back. We have to do that. So we need to know some of these things. So what's the deadly, you know, the, the, the bottom line is witchcraft is, is deadly and the results of it are deadly. One biblical account that clearly shows the deadly effect of witchcraft can be seen in 2 Kings chapter 21 and it tells of Manasseh, one of Israel kings, who was a spiritualist practitioner. All information leads us to believe that Manasseh was a high priest of witchcraft and king of Israel. Manasseh worshipped the heavenly bodies and built temples under them, something his father Hezekiah had destroyed during his reign. And it says in um, Second Kings chapter 21, verse 3, For he rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, he raised up altars for Baal and made a wooden image of Ahab, king of Israel, had done, and he worshipped all of the host of heaven and served them. The host of heaven was the stars and the moon and the sun and stuff. He worshipped them and made us, uh, altars for them. Verse 5 says, He built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord, in the temple. He did this. Abomination. Manab, uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I call it Manasseh. Became so vile and haughty that he actually built ungodly altars right in the house of God. Not only did his viol this violate the Holy Scriptures, but it brought... Uh, defilement to the house of worship. In verse 6 it says, Also he made his son to pass through the fire, type of human sacrifice. 
practiced soothsaying, astrology, and witchcraft, and concert, consulted spiritists, wizards, and mediums, those who concert, familiar, consult familiar spirits. <clears throat> So you can learn that all these activities are in an abomination unto God and Manasseh's wickedness was so brazenly obvious not only does it eventually destroy himself he provokes God to anger and brings much suffering to Israel and Jerusalem because he led the, uh, the people of Israel the Israel, Israeli people into these practices. Tell me that a leader don't have power. Tell me that a wrong leader, tell me that a wrong president in the United States can't get the United States into some more kind of trouble. Oh my goodness. You know, here in America, the practice of witchcraft is everywhere. You can go to any town in America and you'll find a reader, a palm reader, an advisor, a, a psychic or, or something in that town. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. And of course uh, he goes on and, and Hilton Sutton in his story there talking about that going into that pharmacy and it was just a front for occultic practice store in which people come and bought that stuff. It, it, see, they had a little dodge. You could put the you know, pins in and everything else in that thing. I'll pick up with this later, and we'll, we'll probably start in looking at astrology. Yes, horoscope and all that. These are the little things that people dabble into that are an abomination unto God and you're opening the door of the devil in your life and dabbling into it. And I know this to be so because the, God, the Bible tells me that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His Word hasn't changed. Amen. Amen. And by no means are we through. It, it kind of gets good. And, 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 and listen... It's for our good, okay? I know sometimes faith comes by hearing and hearing about it. You have to hear it over and over again and some stuff and all. But I, even when I was in the world, y'all, I don't know, maybe y'all it wasn't with everybody and I understand that. But even when I was in the world because of my upbringing, I guess, usually it's because of our upbringing to some degree, I knew what was displeasing to God. You know? Especially when it comes to occultic type things and black magic and, and, you know, I always stayed away from that stuff. I, it, maybe it's just the Lord protecting me, but it, deep in my spirit, I said, man, I, I don't want to get involved with none of that sort of stuff. I don't want to touch it. You know, I didn't understand that it was an actual abomination. Somebody would have told me back in those days it was the abomination of God. I said, what does abomination mean? I don't know what abomination is. You know? But I stayed away from certain things and I'm thankful that I, I was, you know, but yet I had friends that I know that dabbled into things. Dabbled into things. And uh, some are here, some aren't. <laughs> Don't know if what that had to play in their lives or cutting their life short or anything like that. But I know it can. Because ultimately that's what the devil's trying to do. I, I got into a little thing, mishap with a number of people online and stuff about demon possession and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, there's, I believe there's ministries out there and they, they do really well at uh, ministering to people and, you know, setting them free from demonic forces, demonic influence, and there's a lot of things that, can, that are there and they need deliverance and stuff. We know the drug addiction pandemic that's going on in America today and around the world, most of it's demonically influenced. It's the reason why they cannot get set free. It's a demon attached to it. And it's on them, and they can't get rid of that demon. 
can't do it. Not, not through natural means. It takes somebody with the word of God and a minister and to, to step into the spirit realm and get that devil off of, help them get that devil off of them. Okay? But um, it's out there. It's real. Where was I at when I said that? Yeah, Christians can't be dead. That's what I was trying to get to. And I, and I purposely stated in dealing with different things that I, I got into that little conversation not knowing what I was getting into. They'd asked a question, and I just answered it out of my own reasoning, you know, and, and jumped into a fire bed there and stuff. And I, and I basically just told them a, de- a, a Christian can't be demon-possessed. What is God going to do? Just move aside and let the devil come in? God's not going to live in that. Per- God's in us. We're, we're wall-to-wall Holy Ghost. He's not living in there with the devil. But I will tell you this. I do believe that a Christian, and no, I do not believe in once saved, always saved. If a t- Christian turns away, it would take a long time for this to occur. But if he opens the door to the devil and continues opening doors to the devil, event- the devil's main purpose is to, for demon possession. And he's going to work hard to become to possess that person. But God will at that point, just like Saul, God will have to have departed. Remember Paul said, I mean Saul said, not Paul, Saul, King Saul, not Paul the Saul, but King Saul, he knew God had departed from him. He knew it. And so, yes, a Christian, could they ever get there? Shame on them if it ever got there, but it, it, there's, I guess, a possibility that could happen. But somebody that's out there dealing with uh, things that has gotten born again, you know, they're not demon-possessed. They may be demon-oppressed. The devil's on their back and has attached to them and is causing these things, and you can cast that devil off of them. But don't let, let's say it right. Let's don't say we cast the devil out of somebody. You just got the devil off their back is all you did. Because a Christian ain't going to be born, uh, possessed with a devil. I just don't believe that. I don't find it in Scripture anywhere. And I got into a big firecracker there, you know, with that. But I stand corrected on the fact that I guess there is a possibility that somebody could turn from God, say, I don't want nothing to do with you no more. And that a, devil, a demon could begin from that point on working until he became demon-possessed. And somebody might say, well, I know he was born again. Well, he was born again, but he's not no more. He turned from God. I do know in Scripture the Bible talks about things like this, that you and I, when we see someone who is in that, that place, we should go to them and, and, and show them uh, their error in love. And if they don't receive that, we're supposed to go grab another second witness and come to them again and show them in love their error. And if they refuse, then... They refuse those two and the church as itself. And you don't see so much of it today, although I've heard this one person say that they do it. But uh, I've never done it. We as the church are supposed to come together for and pray for the destruction of their flesh so that in the end Satan will not drag them into hell, that they, that they would die now while they're still saved and go to heaven. You don't see the church doing that so much today. But it's in the Bible. (laughs) We don't operate in half the stuff that the body of Christ is supposed to because we're ignorant concerning the things that God has given us and told us to do. It's just a fact. But my goal is to just teach you the best the fullest counsel of God that I can possibly teach everybody here and stuff, and I learn right alongside you. I don't know it all neither. Amen. I know I've gone way too long. Let's pray. Uh, Anybody have prayer requests or a testimony or anything they want to share?
as we close out this morning, this evening, this morning, anything at all? Amen. Well, well let's um, do our praise and worship song or, or song or whatever and finish out. And if y'all have anything. Okay. I don't know. Oh, we're still on right now, ain't we? Anything particular you want me to pray about? <laughs> I'm just lost, baby. I mean, I get that thrown at me a lot. Mate. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for everybody who's present here this evening in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Father God, those that are watching online, Father, if there's anybody there that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, want to give them that opportunity right now to make Jesus the Lord of their life. All you have to do is ask this simple prayer, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with it. Right now, I believe that I am born again. I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with any uh, sense of uh, sincerity and stuff, I believe right now you are born again. It's important for you to find a church that teaches the Word of God, a Bible-based church that teaches the Word of God, and get in it and get involved and, and learn about your faith. And uh, let me just pray once again over everybody. Father, we just thank you for your blessings. I thank you. I call each and every person here blessed in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father God, that no plague comes nigh our dwelling. We walk in the promises of your word. Your word says that the law and the spirit of life of Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.